I wanted to turn to Noam Chomsky, who's still with us on the phone from Boston. Uh, Noam, I wanted to ask you about Howard Zinn's role in the anti-war movement in the 60s. In 1968, Howard Zinn traveled to North Vietnam with Father Daniel Berrigan to bring home three U.S. prisoners of war. They became two of the first Americans to visit North Vietnam during the war. Uh, this is Howard Zinn speaking in 1968, after he returned to the United States. Father Bergen and I, on our way back, this may be, seem presumptuous on our part, but when, on our way back in, from Paris, we sent a wire, I think with our last 15 bucks, to the White House, saying something like, uh, we'd like to talk to you, President Johnson. You know, would you please meet with us? Uh, we just come back from Hanoi. We just talked with the Premier Pham Van Dong. We just read in the newspaper that you say the North Vietnamese uh, are not ready to negotiate. Uh, what we uh, learned from Pham Van Dong uh, seems to contradict that. Uh, we'd like to talk with you about this and about the prisoner release, which we think has been mishandled. But, but we have not so far received an answer from LBJ. That was Howard Zinn. Noam Chomsky, talk about this period. Talk about the time Howard Zinn went with uh, Father Dan Berrigan to North Vietnam and what it meant. Well, that... <clears throat> That was a breakthrough, uh, uh, recognizing the humanity of uh, the official enemy. Of course, the main enemy uh, was the people of South Vietnam, who were practically destroyed. South Vietnam was, had been devastated by then, uh, and, and that was important. But at least in my view, the most, uh, the more, more important was his uh, the book that you mentioned before, uh, The Logic of Withdrawal. I mean, there there was by then, so I guess it must have been 1967, a, you know, a substantial anti-war movement, but it was uh, a keeping to palliatives, you know, stop, um, stop doing these terrible things, uh, do less, and so on. Uh, Howard uh, really broke through. He was the first person to say loudly, publicly, uh, very persuasively, that this simply has to stop. We should get out, period, no conditions. Uh, we have no right to be there. It's an act of aggression. Pull out. Uh, actually, he uh, that was so surprising at the time. It became more commonplace later that uh, he couldn't even, there wasn't even a review of the book. In fact, he asked me if I would review it in Ramparts, just so that, which, you know, left-wing journal was running then, uh, uh, just so somebody, people would see it. So I did that, but uh, it it sank in pretty quickly, and it just changed the way people uh, looked at the war. And in fact, that was uh, one of his fabulous achievements all along. He simply changed people's perspectives, uh, both by his argument and his courage and his integrity and uh, uh, his willingness to be on the front line all the time and his simplicity and, as Alice Walker said, his humor. Uh, this is one case, the war of his people's history is another case. I mean, it simply changed the uh, conscience of a whole generation. Uh, the uh, it's, uh, there had been some uh, studies, you know, of uh, uh, sort of uh, actions from below, but uh, he raised it to an entirely new plane. In fact, the phrase of his that always rings in my mind is his uh, reverence for and his detailed study of what he called the countless small actions of unknown people that lead to those great moments that enter the historical record, a, a record that uh, you simply can't begin to understand unless you look at those countless small actions. And he not only wrote about them eloquently, but he participated in them, and he inspired others to participate in them. And the uh, anti-war movement was one case, civil rights movement before it, uh, uh, Central American wars in the 1980s. In fact, just about any uh, you know, uh, uh, office worker strikes, uh, just about anything you can any significant action for a peace and justice, Howard was there. Uh, people saw him as a leader, but he was really a participant. His, you know, his uh, uh, remarkable uh, character made him a leader, if, even if he was just sitting on the, you know, waiting for the, the police to pull people away like everyone else.
Noam, in 1971, you may remember this. In fact, uh, you may have been there. But Howard Zinn and Daniel Ellsberg were both beaten by police in Boston at a protest against the Vietnam War. One day before the beating, uh, Zinn spoke at a large rally on Boston Common. This is an excerpt from the documentary You Can't Be Neutral on a Moving Train. A lot of people are troubled by civil disobedience. As soon as you talk about committing civil disobedience, uh, they get a, a little upset. That's exactly the purpose of civil disobedience, to upset people, to trouble them, to disturb them. We who commit civil disobedience are disturbed too, and we mean to disturb those who are in charge of the war. He said at the end of his speech, I remember, he said, now let me address the secret police in this crowd. Two agents of the FBI were circulating in the crowd. Hey, don't you see that you're violating the spirit of democracy by what you're doing? Don't you see that you're behaving like the secret police of a totalitarian state? Well, that cost him a bit, I think, uh, the next day when we were sitting in front of the federal building, I have a feeling. Because, uh, again, the police chose, in the end, to arrest almost no one. They didn't want arrest. They didn't want a trial. They didn't want the publicity that would be associated with that. They only arrested a couple of ringleaders, and one of those was Howard. And so, let the spirit of disobedience spread to the war factories, to the battlefields, to the halls of Congress, every town and city, until a killing stops, until we can hold up our heads again. And at that point, the batons were raised, and they began clubbing us very heavily. Howard was pulled up, as I say, his shirt was ripped apart, he was taken away, and I saw blood coming down his chest as he, as he left. Uh, that was an excerpt of the documentary Can't Be Neutral in a Moving Train was all, also the title of Howard Zinn's autobiography. Uh, Noam, we just have a minute left in this segment, but um, talk about that activism. Well, that, that case is very similar to what Howard described about his uh, bombing attack. I mean, the police were actually sympathetic, the individual policemen. They were coming over to demonstrators, you know, um, uh, speaking supportively. Uh, and in fact, when they were given the order to move forward, uh, they were actually telling people, Howard and others, look, please move, because we don't want to do this. But then when the order came, they did it. Uh, I don't know who, but uh, it's much like he said, when you're in uniform, uh, under arms, uh, an automaton following orders, you do it. And as Dan pointed out, they went right after Howard, probably in reaction to his comments the day before, and he was dragged away and beaten. But he, he was constantly involved in civil disobedience. I was many times with him as Dan Ellsberg was and others. And uh, he was just, uh, he, he was fearless, he was simple, he was straightforward, he said the right things, said them eloquently, and uh, inspired others to move forward in ways they wouldn't have done and change their minds. Uh, they changed their minds by their actions and by uh, hearing him. He was a really, uh, both in his life and in his work, he was a, a remarkable person, just irreplaceable. Um, you were personal friends with Howard, too. You and Carol, um, Howard, and Roz um, spent yeah. summers near each other on the Cape. Yeah, we were personal friends, close personal friends for many years, over 40 years. So it's, of course, a personal loss, but it's uh, uh, beyond, even beyond his close friends and uh, family. It's just a tragic loss to the uh, uh, millions of people, who knows how many endless numbers, uh, whose lives he touched and changed and helped them become much better people. Uh, he, uh, uh, the one good thing is that he, he understood and recognized, I'm sure, especially in those last uh, remarkable, vibrant years of his life, uh, how much his incredible contributions were uh, welcomed, admired, uh, how much uh, he was loved and admired. And he could look back on a very 
uh, satisfying life of real uh, unusual achievement. Well, Noam Chomsky, I want to thank you very much for being with us. Uh, Noam is a, a linguist, a world-renowned dissident, and a close friend of Howard Zinn. And Alice Walker, thanks as well for joining us from Mexico, a former student and friend of Howard Zinn. This is Democracy Now! When we come back, we'll hear more of Howard in his own words, and we'll be joined by Anthony Arnov, his co-editor and colleague. Stay with us. <laughs>